guys, I'm Kimberly from Fat Quarter Shop, and today's Stitchy Talk, we're gonna talk all about floss for cross-stitching. And so, when you use uh, floss for cross-stitching, you usually would use embroidery floss. And today we're gonna talk about basically solid, basic floss. We're gonna talk about over-dyed floss and silk floss. Now, in this video, we're not gonna talk about every single brand. We're gonna more focus on um, what we carry at Fat Quarter Shop and what we carry at Fat Quarter Shop are the most popular brands. So, um, floss is stranded, and it's usually, it's made up of multiple strands twisted together, and you'll hear most people call it floss. It's the standard thread choice for cross-stitch, and there's usually six strands in each floss, and it's packaged loosely in coiled sets called skeins. So this would be a skein, this would be a spool. And some of your silk have more than six strands and we'll talk about that later. And each of these are generally five to eight yards long, depending on the manufacturer, except this one is a lot longer. But as we talk about each brand, I'm gonna talk about price, I'm gonna talk about colors, like the number of colors they have, where it's made, is it expensive, how easy is it to find, so that you know a little bit about each brand. So we're gonna start with solid threads. So before we start, these are our solid threads, these are our hand dyed threads, and these are our silk threads. The difference in these two brands is one of the silks is solid and one is hand dyed. So we're gonna start with DMC. So I've just got some DMC just to show you some color variations. So DMC is the most common and widely available thread on the market. So you could go into any type of craft store like a Michaels or a Joann's and you're gonna be able to find it. Obviously, you can find it in quilt stores or cross-stitch stores also, but it is the easiest to find. DMC has been providing consistent color and high-quality threads for cross-stitch for over 200 years. They're based in France. There are 489 colors, and each skein has 8.7 yards. This is the cheapest less the least expensive thread about 10 cents a yard and at fat quarter shop we do carry all 489 colors in addition to the colors that we sell we also have we have the solids we have the variegated and then we have some of the other specialty flosses they have and we do have a lot of different thread packs so if you're wanting to start out you could find a thread pack with the colorway you like but if you're starting this is what i would suggest to start with because it's the most widely available it has the most colors and it's the least expensive so that is all about dmc Okay, this brand is called Cosmo. Cosmo is made in Japan. It is difficult, it's more difficult to find. It wouldn't be in any type of chain store and it might be in a local needlework store, but it would be more common to find in quilt shops because it was introduced to the quilt, mar to the quilt market as an embroidery floss. So that's where you're gonna find it the most is either a quilt shop or an online shop. They have been creating threads since 1950 there are 462 colors and each skein is eight yards long, so it's a tiny bit shorter than DMC. It's slightly more expensive. It's about 15 cents a yard. I would say the thickness is the same as DMC. What I would say I like better about it than DMC is it does have more of a shine to it. And so it's a little bit uh, more of a sheen to it. It's a little bit prettier. Now at Fat Quarter Shop, we do not carry all of the colors, but we do sell full assortments of the entire 462. And that's something that we have in stock. Um, we um, sometimes go out of stock and we restock it right away. So if we don't have it in stock now, we should have it in stock in um, two to three weeks. So that is all about Cosmo. 
again, 462 colors. RFL is a brand that a lot of you know from the quilt industry. And uh, this is an assortment, I'm gonna show you two different assortments of RF Loss. But this is an assortment of the RF Loss. RF Loss was, um, RFL was established in 1983, providing superior cotton threads for quilting. It is made in Italy, and I think it's slightly thinner than the DMC or the Cosmo. There are a total of 270 colors available. So that's about half of the color options um, that DMC or Cosmo have. The main difference is these are 18 yard spools. So you get a lot more thread, but you get it in a really cute wooden spool and you can use the wooden spools for decoration later. later. This is the most expensive solid floss at 33 cents per yard, but you're getting more thread per spool and you're getting a little decorator piece. Um, so we carry about half of the assortment of DMC at Fat Quarter Shop and we do have assortment. So this is an assortment of RF Loss that sells as a set that um, RF Loss put, RFL puts together. And I love RF Loss because for me, because it's slightly thinner and it doesn't shed very much, I find that it doesn't knot as much for me because it's a little bit thinner. So this is one way you can store the RF, RF floss. Another way is you can store them just on shelves, you know, cause, it, cause they just stand up or you can put it in an acrylic box. There's lots of ways you can do it. And with this one, we have like pinks, reds, orange, browns. We put them by color. So there are lots of ways to store them. And I think our floss is so nice and pretty. So that is our, um, our solids. So you have DMC, Cosmo, and Arafloss. So again, this is made in France, Japan, Italy. 8.7 yards, eight yards, 18 yards, 10 cents a yard, 15 cents a yard, and 33 cents a yard. So that's kind of a summary of the solids. And also this is the easiest to find. And these, this one's probably the next easiest to find. And then the Cosmo would be the hardest to find. I will say with Cosmo, one thing that's great is they do have the best aquas. So that's, that is one thing that I like. So now that we've talked about three brands of solids, we're gonna to move to Overdyed. I am gonna answer questions at the end, and I did wanna let you know, <clears throat> there are obviously a lot more solid brands, but I'm focusing on the ones that um, we know the most about. So for Overdyed threads, this is our second type of floss. Overdyed thread is the term used for hand dyed cotton floss. These threads have been dyed with different colors on top of a base color so that it blends together. Some skeins will have a drastic variation and other skeins will have more of a subtle appearance. There are slight variations with every dye lot. So if you're going to, if you're going to purchase floss for one project, you need to buy all of it at one time because if you buy a hand dyed, if you buy an over dyed thread or hand dyed thread today and a different one in six months, or you buy it from two different stores, they may be from a different batch and they may not match. In your stitching, over dyed thread will give you more dimension to your project. Every brand uses their own type of dyeing process and that is very much a trade secret. So. They're not going to give, so I know some of you might ask, you know, how do they dye? That's all trade secret. Um, they keep all of that secret. But because they use different dyeing processes, that is why some hand dyed threads are color fast and some are not. We are gonna discuss the three most common brands of hand dyed floss and the ribbon red, um, sorry, classic color works, weeks dye works, and gentle arts. 
those are the three brands you're going to see the most listed on patterns now all of these are the exact same price per skein they're about 51 cents a yard and each manufacturer will release just a few colors each year and sometimes they release limited colors that are only available for you know a month or two so starting off it's easy because they are all the same price at well i can speak for us at fat quarter shop they're all the same price on our website so first we're going to talk about classic color works this is the brand that i use the most it does come with a white tag and the tag has a hole at the top and the bottom so that you can put anything that is left over on the top and that's very convenient classic color works was formerly known as crescent colors so in your stash you might see something that says crescent colors they have 269 colors each skein has five yards and they're pre-cut into one yard length. So when you pull this off, it's already cut. Classic Color Works is not color fast, meaning the color may rub off or transfer off if it gets wet. So I would not wash anything that uses Classic Color Works because you don't want it to bleed. So again, Classic Color Works, 269 colors, five yard skeins, skeins pre-cut into one yard lengths. And I will say all three of these brands are dyed in the United States. They're all based in the US. Weeks Dye Work started in 1994. They have 348 colors. These are also five yard skeins, but they are not pre-cut. They come in one continuous length. So what you have to do with this is you have to take it and then cut it into your um, one yard strands and it doesn't have a second hole. So it's a little bit harder to um, keep all your floss on here. Week Dye Works now has a new dyeing process that is color fast. So some of, the, some of them will be color fast and some are not. So you just look on the back and if it is color fast, it will say color fast. Now we're gonna try to find a skein that has a lot of variegation to show you. So when you're shopping, and of course this is easier uh, to do in person at a, at, a, at a craft store or cross stitch store than it would be shopping online. Um, if you look at squash, there's, there's a little bit of yellow that's light and a little bit of yellow that's dark. But if you look at marigold, there is quite a bit of variegation. So when you're stitching, it might be kind of a brown orange, it might be yellow. So you wanna keep that in mind when you're picking floss. Some projects will, um, you know, might look better with more variegation rather than less. Some people prefer more variegation than less. You just have to decide what, um, what you think of that. So this is Weeks Dye Works, 348 colors. Also five yard skeins. Gentle Art started in 1989, and you'll notice the two tags. One is Simply Shaker, and one is Sampler Threads. For me, I don't consider them different. They're dyed the same exact way. It's the same exact thread. If you wanna get into the nitty gritty, the difference between Sampler Threads and shaker threads is the way they're dyed. Oh, I said that wrong. So they are dyed a little bit differently, but both threads are color fast. They're all hand dyed and they all have six ply cotton fabric. The sampler threads tend to be more variegated and they tend to have a broader range of color. So they have more highs and lows. The shaker threads are more muted 
With the exception of a few colors, the shakers are less variegated and typically more muted and have more subtle tones, more mid-range tones. So if that is important to you, you can keep that in mind. There are 124 sampler threads, 206 simply shaker colors, so they have a total of 330. They offer their skeins in five yard and 10 yard skeins. At Fat Quarter Shop, we carry five yard skeins and we do carry one color in a 10 yard skein and that color is chalk. These are similar to classic color works in that they are pre-cut into five yard, one yard lengths and they have the hole at the top, which is a big deal to people and it is color fast. So I'm gonna show you the three brands again and tell you how many colors each of them have. So Classic Color Works has 269 colors. Weeks Dye Works 348. And Gentle Arts 330. These two brands are come pre-cut into one yard lengths. They're all the same price, and then the Weeks Dye Works you have to cut apart. So that is all about hand dyed floss. So now we're gonna talk about two different types of silk. Now silk, is some, besides stranded cotton, silk threads are also used for cross-stitching. It's a luxurious floss with a high sheen. This is a very expensive floss, and this is for you know people who are making heirlooms and maybe something that they want to last forever. So this is um, maybe a higher end of the floss. So I'm only gonna talk about two brands. I will be honest and tell you that the silk does not sell well compared to hand dyed or DMC. Hand dyed sells the best, solid sells second best, and silk sells third best. But the silk sales are very, very low compared to any of the others. It doesn't even compare. So one of the reasons we only carry two brands is because for us, our customers are not actively searching for a lot of silk thread. So we're gonna talk about two brands. One brand is Needlepoint Silks. Sometimes you'll hear people call it NPI. And then Belle Soie by Classic Color Works. So we'll first talk about NPI Silks or Needlepoint Ink. Now when you get these flosses, some have a yellow wrapper and some have a white wrapper, there's no difference. When we first got them, we tried to figure it out. Needlepoint silks are solid. There are eight strands of Chinese floss that is reeled. So when you figure that out, it is more expensive per yard, but you get eight strands, which is 25% more than you would with six strands. There are 476 colors available. It comes similar to DMC where you have to um, unwind it, cut your strands. There are five meters, so that's about five and a half yards. The silk is color fast and it comes to about 91 cents a yard. So much more expensive, you know, that's three times as expensive as DMC, but you do have to figure out, you do have to consider that you get two extra strands within that. So it is not, it's, you know, you, you got to kind of figure that in if you're um, thinking about that because you do get a tiny bit more. Now, I would say silk, this is thinner. And so because it's thinner, it's going to be really beautiful on your piece. But it is because it is thinner, it is going to show more imperfections when you're stitching with it. So that is NPI. Now, Belle Soie, I will say I love this floss. I wish I used it more. I think I actually have one skein of each and I have it in display at my house just to look at it because it's so beautiful. 
So Belle Soie is made by Classic Color Works. It is a hand dyed silk. Now this one has 12 strands of spun silk. So instead of six strands, you're getting 12. So you're getting double. So it comes out to about $1.50 a yard. But if you figure in that you're getting double the strands, that really, if you're comparing it apples to apples, with DMC at 33 cents a yard, this would really be 75 cents a yard because it's 12 strands. There are 126 colors. They usually have at least two colors a year that are new. These come similar to the cotton where it is pre-cut into one yard lengths and it has the really nice hole you can put your leftovers on. And there are, these come in five yards. If I was going to start with silk, I would start with these. They're, they're so nice to stitch with because it's like stitching with butter. I feel like the, the fabric just glides really beautifully through the um, fabric. The main difference between these two silks is NPI is solid, comes in a wide variety of colors with eight strands. So solid, eight strands, five and a half yards. Belle Soie is hand dyed, fewer colors, but 12 strands. There are a ton of silk brands. We're just covering the two that we carry. And like I said, um, silk doesn't sell well for us. So because of that, I um, am really focusing on um, the brands we sell. Now I'm gonna put all the brands back out here and then we're gonna move to some questions that came in beforehand. And then um, from that, we'll go to the questions that have come in after. So the first question, um, can I talk about floss organization and storage? So we have a video on this channel, which is Fat Quarter Shop Floss Tube. It's called Cross Stitch Organization Tips from the Pros, Fat Quarter Shop Floss Tube. It's an entire cross stitch organization playlist on our channel. And so I show some organization in one of the videos of how we store things at work. I have another video that shows how I store floss at home. So um, there's a lot of options there that we already have filmed. So I would refer to that. And those are longer videos and they do have a lot of detail. Which floss is hand dyed, but not variegated with silks? So with silks at fact, okay, so if, I'm gonna read that again, which floss is hand dyed, but not variegated? So right there, if it's hand dyed, that means it's gonna have variegation. So whether it's silk or cotton, doesn't matter, it is going to have variegation because it is hand dyed. Depending on the color you pick, will, t will depend, the color, the brand, the, everything will depend on how much variegation there is. Will floss change colors if stored near a window? So if in, just like a quilt or anything else that's a text, a fiber, mm -hmm. if it is in bright light for years, it will fade. We have a quilt in our entryway that is completely almost white. It's faded so much, but it's been there for six years and I didn't mind if it faded. I wanted a pretty uh, quilt in the entryway. So if you are worried about it, before you use your floss, I would always keep it in some type of closed container. And if you finish your piece and it's framed, I would put it in museum glass. Do I find certain floss knots or sheds less? Okay, so let's talk about shedding. Every time you pull your thread through your Ada linen even weave, it's pulling a piece of the thread. It's going to shed. Some brands shed more or less. It's gonna depend on the needle you use, the length of floss you use, and the fabric you're stitching on. So to be honest, it just depends on you, your project, and the supplies you use. For me personally, our floss 100% sheds the least and 
Belsois sheds the most because it is silk. That is a personal opinion. Now, Cheryl, who stitches here, that would not be her answer. So like I said, it's going to be a personal uh, preference. Why do some DMC floss threads, light yellow or white, for example, seem to be thinner than others using the loop method? The coverage seems worse. Okay, so if you have a lighter floss, especially a white, it's going to show the most imperfections because it's white. I don't necessarily think the thread is thinner, but it could be because of the dyeing process. That's something that um, I wouldn't know exactly because I'm not the dyer, but for white or any light floss that I'm using, I will railroad and it will take out some of those imperfections. Uh, but other than that, I don't know um, the other answer. I think it has to do with the dye process, the way the dye reacts to the fibers. But my advice would just be to railroad if your stitches are looking messy. Another thing I would say about stitching in general is some days you might stitch and your stitches look fabulous. Another day, they might not look as good. So maybe one day you might have to railroad, one day you might not, and that might not have anything to do with the floss. That might have to do with kind of what mood you're in. I wanted to know about silks and have never used them, but I want to. So we just covered two of the brands. And um, what I would say is if you're interested in using silks, I would go to look at a floss tuber who really uses those. One that I can think of that uses them is, um, oh my gosh, what's her name? She's, Jan. no, Jan Hicks does use them, but it's, it's the lady who, um, her husband does the filming and I can't think, I'll try to think of her name, but she uses a lot of silk. She does a lot of samplers. So I would try to find floss tubers who use silk and refer to them for their expert advice. Um, we'll try to look up who she is, but um, maybe somebody will comment and let me know who it is. Um, but she has a lot of advice on silks. I need the details on the various threads that are on spools. I have never used them, but want to know if these would be something I would want to use. So today we talked about Arafloss, and that's the only one on spools that we're going to talk about today. There is also a brand called Sulky, and um, well, Sulky is a 12 weight, one strand floss. We don't sell very much of it because it hasn't sold well for us. Um, I have never used it, but I will show you a spool. So at our store, Back Quarter Shop, we only sell them in the little sets. I have never tried them, and Cheryl has actually never tried them. So, whereas this comes our floss comes in six strands. Okay, the salt box stitcher Carol. That is who I would follow. That is correct. Salt box stitcher. Her name is Carol. She does a lot of samplers and talks a lot about MPI and different um, silks. And she's funny. Okay. So Sulky, it comes in a 12 weight and it's basically one strand that's equivalent to two strands of DMC. I've never used it, I don't know much about it, but I do know hands-on design sometimes does color packs and if those are done, we'll offer them if they're requested. Um, we don't sell the individual spools because it's just not a high enough demand for us to justify carrying it as a store but I haven't tried it. So, um, you know, maybe you try a pack of the 12 weight or, you know, a spool or two of the Aurifil and just see what you think. What I like about the Aurifil is when I'm done with them, and yes, I have finished some, I keep them in a little bowl, the little, um, cause they're cute. Okay, the next question says, they had trouble with fancy floss knotting, any suggestions? They like the way the fancy floss looks, but it's frustrating using it. So, what I would say, and not everybody will agree with this, 
What I would say is if you're having issues, you can use a beeswax or you can use kind of a thread conditioner that's not beeswax that might have um, some unnatural chemicals in it. What this is going to do, and I do use, um, I kind of go in and out of sport, spurts of using it. Some projects I use it the entire time. Sometimes I don't use it at all. It kind of depends on my mood. What it will do is it will really take out the kink in your thread. But what it will also do is it will um, make your thread very, it will make it slightly darker, but it will make it very taut. So um, I would say if you start a project with beeswax, you would need to use that throughout the project. So what I do is a lot of times if I'm doing something that's the solid barn, like the barn star sampler, if I'm using something like that that is just solid over and over and over, I will use beeswax because my stitches will lay flatter and with something so solid over and over, you can see your imperfections more. Some people don't like, like using beeswax because it kind of takes the thread too dark or it kind of maybe might take away from it. So it's really a personal choice. So for knotting, I would say number one, you could use a thread conditioner. And another thing that Cheryl suggested was when you're pulling your thread out, and you're pulling your thread away, you pull one strand out at a time, not two. That's my second tip. My third tip is use a shorter stitch length. So between the three of those, you should be able to kind of play around with one of those three options to see what looks better. Okay, this is another question about beeswax. Can I run silk through the wax like I do cotton floss? I would not do that because your silk is already like thinner. It's already gonna be softer. I just think it's gonna take away the beauty of it. But again, that's something you could go to the Saltbox Stitcher's um, YouTube channel and maybe ask her because she is an expert in using silks. I am not. So you're probably gonna get a more accurate answer but personally, I wouldn't. I also think the silk costs more. It's, um, yeah, so I, I wouldn't. Waxing or no waxing to the different flosses. So I just answered that, but I would say if you have something that is just like four colors, for example, and there's just not a lot of color changes, especially if you're using a solid over and over and over, that's when I would use a uh, thread wax or beeswax. And I use Lori's brand um, because I know it's 100% beeswax because we have it made with the lady and um, it's made in the United States um, at a local bees farm or whatever you call those things. Um, but so I would say for me, I use it, it depends. Like one month I'll use it all the time. One month I won't, it kind of depends, but I'll keep a note on my pattern in my bag if I am using it so that I can remember that when I go back to it. The next question says, I've never stitched with fancy floss, but I'm preparing to for the Halloween stitch along, and I've heard you stitch it differently than regular DMC. Yes. So I went into detail on that. The Stitchy Talk is Stitchy Talk number 22 and it's called Kimberly Teaches the Loop and Tail Method with Hand Dyed Floss. I would watch that video. That is gonna show you in detail how you're supposed to stitch according to, you know, whatever you're supposed to do. Basically, how you're supposed to stitch, which is how Cheryl stitches versus how I stitch. And I really strongly believe in whatever craft you're doing or whatever you're doing in life, whatever you like to do, do it. I don't care about the variegation. So, you know, I have people who comment and say, well, if you don't care about the variegation, why are you buying hand-dyed floss? Because I want to? Because sometimes they're prettier? I don't know. Sometimes I like the colors. There doesn't have to be, like, it doesn't have to be so ruly, ruly, and you, ha you set all these rules for yourself. Do whatever you want to do. Um, so that's what I do. So you can watch that, and you'll see the real way, 
you'll see the Kimberly way, and you can decide for yourself what is best. And everyone should do it the way they want. Cheryl never uses beeswax. Cheryl uses a different needle than I use. Cheryl uses different thread than I use. It's okay, whatever you like, do it. So sometimes I feel like in the videos, you guys are looking to like make it perfect or make it, and I, I mean, I do have my stitching pretty perfect, but you don't have to do it exactly, exactly, exactly because somebody else does it that way. Oh, and these are just, this is funny, this is off to the side. These are the little things we still have it on the side. This kind of shows uh, what we did on that video, the different ways to stitch. So you'll have to watch that video to see. Um, but I think it's a great video. We put a lot of time into it. And so that video really has a lot of detail that hopefully is useful to you guys. I'd love to hear about ironing with different types of floss. Okay, so I have two answers here. One is, Denise irons all of my pieces when I'm done. So she just uses the Rowenta that we use on our quilting set. She puts either a towel or a pressing cloth before she does it. And um, she doesn't use starch or steam or anything. Cheryl, I think uses a dry iron. I'm not sure if she uses a pressing cloth, but she doesn't, neither one of us wash our pieces. So we just iron them when we're done. One suggestion that Cheryl has given to you guys before is she irons her fabric before she starts stitching, especially if it's hand dyed fabric, because hand dyed fabric is, and you can watch last month's Stitchy Talk, and that will talk in detail about the hand dyed fabric and how she, she will iron it first to get those irons out rather than at the end. Does over dyeing weaken the floss or make it more susceptible to shredding? I would say, um, no, I don't notice a difference, but I think shredding and tangling has a lot to do with the needle you're using, if it's a good quality needle, the size of needle you're using, and the fabric you're using. So that is what I think that's gonna have more of an effect on shredding than it would if it's hand dyed or if it's solid dmc i think it's the same what length of floss is best to thread the needle with and does it differ for different types of floss or fabric so cheryl uses an 18 inch length so when she gets this these are five yard cuts she cuts this in half she uses 18 inches because she uses two strands at a time over one stitch. That video I just referred to shows that. I use one yard lengths because that's what it comes in and I use the loop method. So I think if you're keeping two strands together an 18 inch length is great. If you're doing the loop method, a one yard length is good. But again, whatever you find gives you the best results is what you should do. Does it get tangled up when you put it in your project bag? So it doesn't. I literally just throw stuff in my bag. So when I'm done, usually I'm in the car and Kevin's like, we gotta go, basketball game. Cause the kids will usually text one of us when we have to go in. And if it's early, I just literally throw, wherever the needle is, I don't even know. I just throw it in the bag. It doesn't get tangled. I do it all the time. Now you could keep your bag neater than mine. Um, you could do however you want. This is a great question. Are any of the brands of hand dyed floss color fast when wet? I only currently stitch with DMC and one of my reservations is the potential need to wash a finished stitch. So you can go back to the beginning of this video and we talk about which ones are color fast and which ones are not. And I would refer to that. What is the best way to work with metallic threads? So a shorter thread length. So instead of 18 inches, maybe nine inches. Also a bigger eye needle. How many brands of Fancy Floss are there? I've used Classic Color Works, Weak Styleworks, and General Arts, but randomly hear about others. 
So there are other brands. Some of them only sell, they only sell retail, so they don't sell to uh, cross-stitch stores. Some are just smaller brands, but there are probably 10 or 12. But like you said, those three brands are listed the most on patterns. And a lot of people will just buy what the pattern designer has listed because that's easier and they like the look of it. Okay, this, this last question was before everything came in and then I'm gonna go to your question. So if you have a question, put it in. If we've already answered it, we probably won't answer it again. Do you sell the conversion charts for the different floss companies? We do not. And the reason we don't is Classic Color Works, the ribbon red, it's not the same as DMC. It may be close to a DMC color, but it's not the same. And it would be kind of insulting to put that kind of thing on our website to maybe Diane who dyes her thread. So you can Google and people from their home have done personal charts or some companies have done that. I have chose not to, um, but you that's something you could Google. I'm wondering if Kimberly has heard of the brand Sullivan and how it compares to DMC. Yes, so we I have heard of it. It is, people think it's made in the United States. It's actually not, it's distributed in the United States. It is uh, supposed to be a little bit, uh, the quality is supposed to be a little bit less and the price is a little bit less. But with us carrying Aurifil, DMC, Cosmo, I decided not to bring that one in-house just because I would have to have 300 more bins for 300 more colors. And I just don't think that the sales would justify that much space in um, where we fill our orders. Kay Nella says, a couple of years ago, I went ahead and got all 489 colors. When I start a project, I love having the color on hand. That's a great tip. And I have all the colors of DMC. And if you watch the video where I show floss, to, floss storage at my home, there's a part one and a part two. And I show you how I store that in a very inexpensive Hobby Lobby container. It's a different one than we have here. Um, I actually copied it from Lori Holt. And um, if you were gonna do that, um, we don't sell full sets, but you can find them online at some store. I think DMC might sell a set of a full set and you can just go to a craft store and just pick every one of them. Oh, the question is about Cosmo colors. Okay, D, do they, okay, I think she's talking about Cosmo. They do look like more of a sheen and bright. Do they have any prim colors? Not really, their colors are more bright and more, um, like more happy colors. Can we substitute Cosmo for DMC? Yes, you can substitute anything you want. And there are, if you Google, DMC conversion for Cosmo Floss. You're gonna find that out there somewhere and you could kind of go with that. Now, okay, do they have color names or numbers? Okay. I'm gonna answer this one by one. DMC, they have colors and they have given names to their floss. The same thing with Cosmo, I think. I'm not really sure if Cosmo names them. Aurifil, I actually don't know, they have numbers. So all of the hand, all of the solids have numbers. I would just say that, numbers. All of the overdyed have names. There are numbers, but generally a pattern is not gonna list, even though that has a Weeks Dye Works number, that's not gonna list it. You're gonna see that by name. For NPI, it's gonna be a number, and for Belsois, it's gonna be a name. I heard the dyeing process is changing due to the EPA and there might be more bleeding soon, especially the brights. So I haven't heard that, but I have heard there will be, there. the EPA has made some changes in the dyeing process. I'm hoping that um, one of the companies will come out and make a statement about, you know, how that's gonna affect in the future. I don't think any of these companies would come out with a project that was gonna intentionally bleed. I do think some of the colors might change, but all of that is going to be something that we see in the future, probably starting in two to three months. 
um, I think with that, some of the colors that are the base, that are the dye colors are no longer available. Is there an actual variation in white classic color works like Snowball? Very light. Same thing with bamboo, very light. Is there a difference in the ease of use? Well, I would say the cotton is really easy to use. The hand dye the same. Silk, I think is awesome because it really goes through your fabric nicely. So I think silk is the easiest, the nicest to use. But again, personal preference. Okay, Pamela asks, what is the difference th from the three brands when you pull each through Ada or Linen? There's no difference. What needle do I use for silk? I use whatever I use for cotton. Now that's probably not the right answer. So you might wanna ask uh, YouTubers who have that specialty. I just use the same. It might be the wrong answer. Cameron says, when you say one over two and two over two, do you fold one strand in half and two strands in half through your needle? Okay, so one over two means one strand over two squares. Two over two means two strands over two squares. With that two strands, you can either do one strand, put it in the loop method, that becomes two strands, or you can keep the two strands together. Do I think the uh, classic Colorworks Bell Swath, some silk should be stored hanging? Oh, I don't know. Um, I have mine in a cute little dough bowl in a bathroom. That, <laughs> that's decoration in a bathroom. That's ridiculous, I know, but it's so cute. I'm sure Kevin doesn't want those in our living room, so I have a little bathroom. That's where I have them in a little dough bowl. So I don't know technically what you're supposed to do, but I use them in the bathroom. I don't store the silk different than the cottons. I'm sure maybe you should. I use my Belle Swaz decoration. I'm not kidding. They're really decoration in the bathroom. My mother-in-law probably thinks I'm crazy. Um, and she does drive me crazy because she hangs her towel above my thread. And so sometimes I'm like, I need to move my thread. Jeanette asks, does floss have a lifespan? I don't think it does. I don't think you have to replace it. I think it's just a cotton that lasts. Do I have a suggestion on needles for 25 count Lugana? Okay, so we're gonna end with that question. Next month's Stitchy Talk is gonna be all about needles. And um, so we're gonna talk all about <coughs> needles. I was afraid if we started talking about needles today, I would answer all the questions that are going to be for next month. So we're going to focus on needles, needle threading, all of that in June 2023. And I think that video will be a little bit later in the month because of vacation plans. So um, we'll post that all online. Thank you so much for joining us today. And of course, if you have any questions about any kind of floss, just put them in the comments and um, we will answer them. And I will see you guys tomorrow for the live stream. Bye.